Mike Conley is out tonight versus uh, Sacramento in what is, by any measure, a must-win game for the Utah Jazz. And very simply, it's must-win because you have a razor-thin one-game lead over the Phoenix Suns. And if you are tied, the Suns will get the tiebreaker. Oh, by the way, uh, they have the Suns coming up this week. Um, So that's going to be a huge game. We will be at uh, the Vivint on Saturday night. The Viv. The Viv. uh, Taking in the uh, Utah Jazz game against my R and we. I'm not a Raptors fan at all. I don't know why I said that. The North. The the Great North coming to town. Jake and I will be there. But these are must-win games. Um, You lose this game tonight, and you head to Phoenix, potentially tied uh, with those Suns for the top spot in the West, Jake. There's nothing good that comes from that. Yeah, I I think that... Um, this is a very straightforward thing, and this is this is how um, interesting situations tend to go in life. I mean, you know, you Mike Conley's out, Don's out. You know, you're you're going to have to play uh, more of your young guys, and I think that you know it's very simple. You're either gonna you're either gonna survive and win this game against the Kings, and and hope to go into the Suns game um, up one game still. Or you're going to lose this game, and you're going to battle right down to the wire with the Suns. And I think that for this Jazz team, they've endured a lot this season. And right now, I mean, this is a great problem to have. I'd rather be talking about this than being a mediocre-ass team uh, who's trying to be the five seed uh, like we were several years ago. So I I want to make it clear that they are in a good spot, but at the same time, winning the Western Conference, being the number one seed headed into the postseason – uh, it's priceless. You can't. There, there's no. There's nothing that's going to replace that. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating. And and I wish that Mike Conley was a player that was more durable, but he's not. And the reality is, is you have to deal with that. And they've been dealing with it for a long time. And the only question at this point, if you're a Jazz fan, is when is Donovan Mitchell coming back? Because there's not really uh, been a clear cut uh, answer to that question yet. No, and I think that there is no question that. Mike Conley, his biggest loss is on defense. Um, Yes, he gives you incredibly important baskets. I think we saw it the other night in the loss at Minnesota. That right-handed runner in the lane absolutely saved any opportunity they had. Oh, by the way, then he had a clutch three to give them the lead before Rudy Gobert and he did not communicate. Uh, And D'Lo wound up getting that layup. But the biggest loss to to the Jazz in Mike Conley is defense. I mean, you have a guy in in Halliburton who – is riding a high. I mean, the guy just signed with Nike. Um, he is coming off of two incredible performances. I look at the Sacramento Kings. Harrison Barnes looks like he is questionable. There's a good chance he's going to play tonight. If if they're only missing De'Aaron Fox, and again, if Harrison Barnes plays, I think there's a real good chance that the Jazz are going to have to to fight for every basket. I think there's a real good chance that this comes down to the last two, three possessions of this game. And Jake, if I'm the Jazz, uh, again, I guess I'll ask you point blank, is this a must win? Because I think it is. Yeah, I completely agree. I do think it is. And I I think that, you know, what we need to be looking for tonight in this game is is what exactly is the strategy going to be tonight against this Kings uh, team? Because to me, when I I look at at the Kings, the, the area of opportunity, if I'm the Utah Jazz, is is playing in the paint. I mean, Rashawn Holmes is a nice player and everything. We covered him when he was a Phoenix Sun coming into the league, but but certainly Rudy Gobert should be able to handle Rashawn Holmes uh, without too much fight, uh, if, if we're just being honest. And, and so, you know, I think back to, <clears throat> and I don't remember the exact game it was. I think it was against the Pacers about, uh, it was in the first half of the season. There was a game where the Suns, or the Jazz came out <clears throat> and they made it a priority to get Rudy Gobert the ball in the paint, and allow him to go to work. And I'd like to see that tonight. I'd like to see them establish a presence in the paint so that as the game wears on, the three-point looks that they're getting are higher-quality looks. We can't do this thing where we roll out, you know, we make a bunch of threes early, then we fall off in the second quarter, we fall off in the third quarter, we're down 10 going into the fourth, and we have to reel this thing back in because that's not where this team can be if they want to win this game. <clears throat> and so to me, I would be coming out. I would be I would be trying to get Rudy um, you know, establishing himself. And then from there, um, you have to see what the Kings give you. Uh, again, I think you make a great point. If Harrison Barnes plays, that's definitely gonna affect 
what you bring to the table in terms of offense and like what you're what you're trying to do. So so to me, again, I would I would start off by giving it to Rudy, trying to to allow him to play some physical basketball down low, and then let's start moving the ball and getting some looks. That that's what I think the game plan should be. Yeah, and, and again, I I think. Defense, I'm really worried about the Jazz on defense. I mean, I, I don't know any other way to plainly say it. Um, I look at the Jazz, and their defense is just not very good right now. And it is communication. It is, you know, slipping, rolling under screens. It is, you know, if you look at guys on the perimeter, um, allowing, you know, filtering guys into the paint, Rudy Gobert is not there. Um, so you're getting layups. Like, I mean, there just is a, a fundamental breakdown in this Utah Jazz defensive schematic right now, and that's not easily fixed, especially when you're asking guys to do things now that they're not used to doing, and you're going to have to do that with with Mike Conley out of the lineup. Now who becomes your number one guard? Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably Joe Ingles becomes your number one guard, and now you're you're looking at heavier minutes for everybody else down the line. Um, and that includes like a guy, you're going to have to get production out of Ursan Ilyasova tonight. Yep. You're going to have to get more points. And here's the real question. You're going to have to get more points and significantly more points out of somebody. Who's got that ceiling? And you know who I'm going to say? It's Boyan Bogdanovich. Mm -hmm. He's got to step up tonight. This is where Bogdanovich has to be huge. And it goes without saying that Rudy, that Jingles, um, you know, those guys have to play big, big roles. Jordan Clarkson, we cannot have another, you know, O for 36 from three. The room <laughs> for error, the margin for error on this Utah Jazz roster, Jake, it, it is gone. And my question is, with Conley out, who do you turn to to score points? Yeah, I, I think you make a great point that, that you know, someone uh, like Bogey is going to have to step up tonight. I, I think that um, that's just almost assumed, I feel like. And, I, and so... Hopefully he can give give you thirty tonight. That that's what I'd like to see out of uh, out of Bogdanovich. Give me thirty. Uh, do your thing. That that's we need we need thirty out of him. I look at I look at Joe Ingles and he's going to be running points tonight, no doubt about it. Um, so for me, I, I need him to be responsible. I need him to limit the turnovers and I need him to be putting guys in good spots uh, to get good looks. So for me. Joe Ingles, being that he's going to be on the ball and not getting as many looks, I'd love to see 20 out of him tonight. 15 to 20 points out of Joe Ingles. Give me seven or eight assists. That, that's what I'd like to see out of Joe Ingles. And then I think that the X factor in this game is going to be Oni. I, I think that he needs to come out here. I think that he needs to have uh, a nice night uh, offensively, meaning he needs to be like 10, maybe 15 points on the top end. But his defense is what really I'm going to be watching tonight because he's somebody – who is actually athletic. He's somebody who's young. He's somebody who's got the legs under him and can come out and, you know, and hopefully play some serviceable defense. So if they get those three guys producing and Rudy does what Rudy usually does, which is somewhere around 20 and 10, 20 and 15, I think that they'll be okay in this game. But I agree with you. The defensive end is extremely concerning because they, they in their starting five when they're healthy, they don't have a lot of defense. So when you're when you're down Donovan, you're down Conley, you're having to play rookies, like it's just it, it's concerning. There's no other way to say it other than it's concerning. I guarantee you tonight, you watch this game, you're gonna see the Kings get Rudy Gobert in awkward situations. I guarantee that. Yeah, and that that would be my game plan. I mean, I, I think you have to minimize Rudy Gobert's impact. They're going to play a smaller lineup. Um, you you already know that. I mean, Bagley's not going to play in this game. Obviously, you're. I think you're going to be heavy perimeter. I think guys like Buddy Heald and Halliburton, and this is why I say I, I know it seems like I I I feel like I've said his name a thousand times, um, but Harrison Barnes has to has to if he plays. I just don't see the Jazz winning this game. If Harrison Barnes plays and is, is himself, I don't see the Jazz winning this game. I really don't. Uh, Forgotten Soul says, who got injured? Mike Conley is out uh, tonight with a tight hamstring. Um, Sack, Shea, Sack, hello? Hello. Why can I not say his name all of a sudden? Sack Shea Jazz says, Conley aggravated his old injury, so doesn't look good long-term as well. I think the Jazz are tanking again like they did last year, falling from possibly third to sixth seed. Okay, let's not get carried away. Yeah. Their schedule is quite soft. I would imagine that Donovan is back within a week. Um, if Donovan were playing tonight, they were, they're beating the Sacramento Kings. Right. The issue with Conley is, and again, 
not to beat this old dead horse, <laughs> you can't count on Conley. And you need to count on Mike Conley when your stud, Donovan Mitchell, is not in the lineup. So now he Donovan's out, Conley's out, and you're scrambling to try and figure out how you're going to beat the Sacramento Kings. And again, I only point to what's going on in Phoenix tonight. Mm-hmm. The Clippers are in town with a hobbled Paul George and no Kawhi Leonard. I mean, this is a this is a situation where you're in you're in real trouble here if you're the Jazz as far as being the number one seed coming out of tonight. In 24 hours, if I had to pin you down in 24 hours, do you believe that the the Utah Jazz will still be the number one seed in the West? No, I think they'll be tied. I I, I think they'll be tied, and I and I think that um you know that that's just that's just where it's going to be. I I think that that the frustrating thing is that the Jazz are again you know, the roster's letting them down. And I know that we always talk about this, and I hate talking about it. It's not fun for me to talk about. But this is this is what happens when you get injured and you don't add to your roster. And, you know, you look at the Nuggets. The Nuggets suffer the Jamal Murray season-ending, gnarly injury, um, demoralizing for their team, but somehow they're surviving because they went out and added somebody. And so... That's why I say I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at all these all these teams who are who are now signing their 10 10 day uh guys, their 10 day contract guys to these season long deals and I'm like man like you know you couldn't you couldn't have gone out and got, you know, Hollis Jefferson, you couldn't have gone out and got like By the way, yeah. not being a jerk about it. Yeah. I told you Mike James would have been a perfect fit on this team. Great example. I watched just about every minute of that Nets game last night. And Mike James is making a real contribution to that club. And Mike is a guy that everybody in our Phoenix viewership knows Mike. He played for the Suns for a short stint. Um, he is a European League MVP. Um, he is one of the best players in Europe by far. And now he winds up on, on a team like the Brooklyn Nets. And what's he doing? He's hitting threes. He's playing tenacious defense. He made three, four extra passes last night that led to um, you know, open open looks for threes, and it was the difference in, in going into the half with the, the Nets having the lead. And I look at the the couple of open looks he got for Joe Harris. That's because he was unselfish and made the extra pass. The Jazz need that guy, and they're not aggressive in the trade market. They're not aggressive in the free agent market, and so now you're going to eat the soup that you made because all you have is all you have is the ingredients you. you you, you've had for the entire year. You're not evolving. You're not changing. You're not growing. You're not doing everything, in my opinion, that you can do to win the Western Conference, have home court advantage throughout, which I think is an absolute must. For the Jazz to win an NBA championship, they must have the, the number one seed. It's frustrating to me that here we are sitting here at the end of April with a, an injury to Mike Conley that is not a surprise. It is not shocking you knew this was coming. Mike Conley misses time every year. Last year, it was Boyan Bogdanovich. This year now, is it going to be Mike Conley? I don't know. But you've done nothing to backstock your depth. And that, to me, is the biggest reason that the Jazz will not, if they do not win the number one seed in the West, and I think they will, if they do not win the number one seed in the West, it will because they did not backfill the roster. Yeah, and and the two guys you did sign, you know, one of them is contributing. Urson is is showing you he can give you some run, but eh. but the problem is is that he does that one night, then he's got to take the next night off. So the point here is that right now the the momentum is in the Suns' favor. There's no doubt about that. You know, you you're that's just where it's at, and I think the bottom line is. Let's say the the Jazz lose this game tonight. The Suns beat the Clippers. You're 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 level headed into into uh, Friday, and you have an absolute smackdown to decide who's going to lead you uh, heading into the last like ten to twelve games. That yeah. that to me, if you're the Jazz, is terrifying because for the first time, and I think there's real credence to this. For the first time as a team this year, you're playing from behind. You've been looking down on this stack the whole year, and now right here at the end. You're going to be looking up at somebody. That, to me, is is, is difficult mentally. I don't think it ever gets there. I, think I hope they, not. I think they may lose tonight, and we've seen that the Phoenix Suns have a propensity to lose games they should win. Mm -hmm. They should beat the Clippers tonight in Phoenix. I think they may be tied with Phoenix after tonight, and I think if that's the case, I think, I think that's a death knoll for the L.A. Clippers. But, again, I just go back to the schedule. 
you look at the the Phoenix Suns schedule, exponentially more difficult um, than it is for the the Utah Jazz. Yeah, and I I fall back on that. I think the Jazz are when they get their guys back. When yeah, when you get Donovan Mitchell back, and hopefully this is a just a maintenance night for Mike Conley. They're not really saying much about the injury. Be terrified about that, bro. It, hopefully it is a maintenance night for Mike, and everybody's back. You know, like it'd be awesome if Saturday night in a back to back, Mike Conley's ready to go. Um, you know, and then you would think in the next few days and the next few games, you're going to get Spider Mitchell back. Mm-hmm. You, you would hope that that's the way, uh, that it goes. Uh, Mina Gray says, good evening from the Philippines. Good evening to you, my friends. Um, uh, Gabe Ledley says, morning fellas, 46 to go. Let's get it. Yeah. Hey, appreciate you, Gabe Ledley. 46 subscribers left to go to 500. Insane. It's been, uh, uh, in the last week, we've picked up a ton, yeah. and we really appreciate that. Now, let's not kid ourselves. We bribed a lot of you to subscribe with an Xbox giveaway, um, which I would say, again, go ahead and hit subscribe. Take a photo that you're subscribed to our channel, and tweet at us, The Monty Show, M-O-N-T-Y, The Monty Show, and SLC Supercars. Um, subscribe, and you're in. And when we, when we get that 500 subscriber, we will give away this Xbox live right here on the show. Um, so we are really looking forward to that. Um, Jameson says, don't forget the Kings are no longer a laydown. Well, I don't think anybody thinks the, the Kings are a laydown. Luke Walton is a disappointment as a coach. I mean, I, I, I think most people would agree with me on that. Um, but his players play hard for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there is, there is little doubt about that, 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 you know, it, Luke has been able to get his, his guys playing, with intensity, yeah, and I think I still think Halliburton's going to be one of the best players to come out of this draft year. Um, and I just look at the way, uh, you know, that they that they go about their business. The Sacramento Kings are not an easy team to play. And if you ask Dallas from the other night, um, they beat Dallas one thirteen one oh six. Who, by the way, thanks to your guy Curry for showing up with his uh, Golden State Warriors, Man. they got boat raced, dude, last that night was by the Mavs. Embarrassing by any standard. Yeah, but uh, Rashawn Holmes the other night, 24 uh, points, six boards, six of six from the free throw line. Halliburton had 14 and 10, 10 dimes, mind you, five rebounds. Uh, Buddy Heald, four of seven from three, 16 points, five boards, five dimes. So they're getting these big contributions yeah. from everybody. Yeah. And they're getting production off their bench. Um, you know, I mean, I. I just think they're an incredibly difficult matchup for anybody. Yeah. And then when you're shorthanded with two your your two best offensive players, because let's let's be honest, right? Donovan Mitchell is your best offensive player. He's your best player all around. No who's doubt your about Who's it, your yeah. number two? Uh, I don't have a number two. It's Mike offense. Conley. It is Mike Conley. There's no doubt he showed. A, did he not show you enough against Minnesota that he still got a lot left in the tank? He can shoot. He can shoot. But when I'm when I'm talking about offensive options. Um, I'm not, this team doesn't need another shooter. This team needs more athleticism and, and Mike Conley is not athleticism. He's shooting. He's a savvy player. He knows how to play off the pick and roll. Um, and, and so I'm not saying he's a bad player, but, but when I, when you ask me, Hey, who's the number two option on this team? Well, I don't know. Ask, uh, it, it changes every given night. If Bogdanovich is dropping a 30 piece, he's my number two option. A 30 you know? piece. If, 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 if the minivan comes off the bench for 15, it's the minivan. uh, you know, it, it just really depends. Yeah. I'm, I'm being in a hole about that. I know. Um, I Look, yes, he's a, he's paper, a crossover SUV, please. Listen, on paper, yes, Mike Conley's your number two option, but I'm telling you <laughs> that it depends on the night because there are nights where he can't make anything. Uh, William says, uh, longtime listener, um, I still think you guys are negative and you hate the Jazz, but you're not wrong. So, wait, well, are we negative and hate so the wait, Jazz? Do we or, hate the Jazz? Uh, or, are we, uh, and, and I love this guy because you'll notice that we stopped, we've largely stopped <laughs> getting, hey, do you guys even watch games? <laughs> Do you guys even care? Uh, we've that guy's <laughs> gone away now. Now it's wow, you guys are just naysayers. You're negative, but you're right. <laughs> but you're not wrong, right? And that's the thing. We have the luxury. Somebody, uh... somebody on YouTube yesterday, I can't remember who it was, asked us. It, it said, "Are you guys jazz fans?" And I said, "Jazz fans, no. Impartial commenters, yes. We have the luxury of being unbiased because we're not jazz fans." 
I don't I don't necessarily have a number one team in the NBA. Yeah. Um, like you you are slurp dishes on the Golden State Warriors. I thought it was funny that Jace sent you a, yeah. a meme of slurping <laughs> from from his Xbox Fortnite Fortniteing. Yeah. Um, but you're you're all about Golden State and mm-hmm. now I guess Brooklyn because of Kevin Durant. Uh, my favorite player is Devin Booker. If I had, you know, I want to say I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, and once Jerry Reinsdorf is no longer amongst the living, I probably will be <laughs> a, a Bulls fan again. I wish you a long, healthy life, sir. Yeah. Uh, but if you're tying me down to a team, it's probably the Lakers more than anything else. Yeah. Um, having been a lifelong Laker fan and covered that team. Um, but I'm a I'm a fan of guys, players. I'm not a fan of teams. Mm-hmm. Um so right now, no, I, I don't have to. I, I love watching Donovan Mitchell play. I thoroughly enjoy the way the Jazz play when they're playing well. They are miserable to watch when they are playing bad. Yeah. Like it, when the Brooklyn Nets are playing terrible basketball, I'm still getting, you know, Kyrie dropping fools. Uh, or I'm getting, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, or I'm still getting KD hitting impossible fadeaway shots. Like there's something to watch there. Yeah. When the Jazz are bad, they're a, they're a, a nothing sandwich. Like they're... There's nothing there. When the Jazz are bad, the game turns into a lot of a lot of transition basketball because yes. bad Jazz basketball is a lot of bricks from three, and yep. all that means is long rebounds. Yep, totally agree. Uh, Kevin says, subscribe to you guys several months ago when you made the switch from Periscope. Appreciate what you do every day. Um, the Jazz are done without Donovan. That's really all you need to say. But see, I don't think they're done without Donovan. What is what is that? What does that look like though? Does done mean that that they are like? Does done mean that they're they're a one and done team in the postseason? Does that mean that that they're just simply not going to be the one seed? Like, what I does think, that mean? I think people are seeing what it's like without Donovan Mitchell, and they're convinced that this team is built around him. And yeah. how long <laughs> have I been saying that it's Don and everybody else? You know, only for months now, <laughs> right? But the point is, I don't think they're done. Without Don, what I think is their margin for error goes away without Donovan Mitchell hitting critical threes out of the corner or trying to dunk on somebody and getting fouled. You you see in the Minnesota losses, it wasn't they weren't blown out. It was a a bad decision here, lack of communication there, bricks from Jordan Clarkson being selfish and being a black hole and not passing the basketball. That's what that's why they lost. If Donovan Mitchell plays, I don't know that it fixes. That final possession where D'Lo got that layup, I don't know. If Donovan's that, not saving that. Donovan's not saving that. Now, well, here's the other thing that pisses me off about the Jazz, even when Donovan does play. He should take the last shot every single time. I don't know that he would have been – even the play would have been drawn for him to get the last shot because you see in a lot of critical situations – the ball doesn't go to Donovan Mitchell, mm-hmm. well, and that in, it's infuriating. Yeah, well, I I think that a lot of defenses are are taking him away as an option. That that's the thing. I, I think that on final possessions, you know, the defense is taking Donovan Mitchell away as an option, and so then it's like, all right, well, we're going to go to Mike Conley and let yeah. him shoot that top of the key jumper, you know, and 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 I think that's what you saw, and so I don't know, man. I I, I think. You know the the one thing that we can say about Donovan is that if Donovan had played in that in that second Minnesota game, they wouldn't have been in that position at the end of the game. Eugene, uh, I can say that. Yep, Eugene twelve says without Mitchell we're toast. The system works, but Donovan finishes games. Period. The Jazz need to start building a statue for Joe Ingles right next to Stockton and Malone. Love the show, guys. I don't know if I if I'd be building statues. And by the way, I left the camera on me, but that's okay because I'm better looking. Uh, I don't know that I would say that they need to start building statues. Yeah. But Joe Ingles is a critical player to this team. We we talk about this. I feel like again, this is one of those things we talk about a lot. Point jingles is going to happen tonight. I mean, I, I don't. I don't see any other way. How else do you – how do you replace Mike Conley? And the answer is you don't. No, you don't. Right? I mean, are you going to start Jordan Clarkson? I would imagine so because what other choice do you have? The crossover SUV, you know, like VW bug van isn't <laughs> – in, 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 you know, Niang is – It's not fucking real. Yeah, it's not <laughs> real. It's not, it's not real. George Niang is not a starter. Yeah. He's the guy that comes in – with a chip on his shoulder and drops three balls. That's George Niang's job. Jordan Clarkson has to start for this team. Yeah. And, you know, I I, I don't is. know. I mean, my guess is you're going Rudy, Bogey. Yeah. Ingles. Yeah. Clarkson. Yeah. And Oni. Oni. 
That's going to be tough to beat the Sacramento Kings with. The question we're re- we were really talking about here is how do you replace depth that you don't have? And you don't. That that that's as simple as that. You can't you cannot make up what you don't have. So like you can't the, when you're disappointed that oh, Jordan Clarkson's got to play 30 minutes tonight. Oney's got to play 30 minutes tonight. Like when you're disappointed by that and you feel like that's letting you down, like you you can't you can't replace not making moves like you can't and and that really don't be frustrated by the result jazz fans don't uh, like don't be frustrated by the result be be frustrated by the the lack of action that's what you should be frustrated with we forgot somebody oh boy Royce O'Neal ah uh, Royce Marty says how do you guys leave out Royce O'Neal because he's very forgettable what do you mean how do I leave him out um. I, I so yes, you're correct. It but here's will be, the thing: you know, Rudy, Bogey, Jingles, Royce. And Why did we Clarkson. forget about Royce? Why did we forget about Royce? Because, because the Jazz forget about Royce. Yeah, because because you know Royce O'Neal um, is a defensive minded player, and and frankly, he gets subbed a lot. He does play a lot of minutes. He does. There's a reason yeah. that he plays a lot of minutes. But tonight. When you're playing a modified starting five, uh, don't be surprised if there are a lot of substitutions tonight and a lot of aggressiveness with that. Yeah, and I think uh, Brandon Whiteside makes a good point. Well, because we have a bunch of players getting minutes that were undrafted or late picks, they're developing. Uh, Ingles undrafted, O'Neal undrafted, Niang from uh, the G League. Yeah, but Jingles and Royce O'Neal are not developing. But how long are we going to be this I mean, team? How long? How long are the Utah yeah, and, Jazz going to be that team? And by the way, how long are the Jazz going to be terrible in the in the in the draft? How how long? How long are how long are the Utah Jazz? You know, going to be a team that is is trying to to battle behemoths in L. A. Um, by playing undrafted nobodies who they have to develop. That's not what the mentality should be anymore. We're not. You are not an average ass team anymore. You're you're you allegedly are the best team in the league. And the problem is, and this is really brass tacks right here, the problem is you've made your name off of a system that you're playing. You're playing a team brand of basketball that has gotten you here. The problem is is that elite basketball talent blows right through the system because they can do things that you cannot. And that's what yep. that's what we're going to see. That's coming, I'm telling you. Yeah, Marcus wants to know if we gave away the Xbox yet. Uh, no. It's sitting right here. Uh, that'll be when we get to 500 subscribers. So go ahead and hit subscribe. Hey, if you're watching this video, please give us a uh, thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. Prediction time for tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with the Jazz to win this game. I think it is, this is a night when big players have to play big. And I know that sounds cliche, but it's true. I think you're going to get a big performance out of out of Rudy. I think they're going to force the basketball to him. And I think they should. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of pick and roll in, in somebody, I want to say it was James Knight, asked why the Jazz don't run more pick and roll with Jingles. I think you have to tonight. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of the ball in Rudy Gobert's hands. And I have to believe that that goes well uh-huh. because the Kings are not a big team. And I think that Quinn Snyder knows that. And I think you're going, that's why you're going to see Rudy a lot more in the offense. Um, and I, I think the bigger question without Mitchell and without Conley is how do they defend a young athletic Kings perimeter? And the answer is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but offensively, I think big nights from Rudy Gobert and, uh, you're going to have to have Gobert Conley and Jingle step up and have 20 point nights each, at least that's going to have to happen. So you said Conley. So he he obviously, he, no Clarkson, 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 Ingles and, uh, Joe Ingles, yeah, Jordan Clarkson, yeah. and Rudy Gobert, yeah, all have to have twenty point nights, yeah. Um, that gets you to sixty. I think if you look at at, at, at Bogey, I think you're gonna have to have it. He needs thirty. It's like, not he's, he's gotta not, have, but he's not a thirty point guy right now. I mean, he get one game of thirty points doesn't make you a thirty point guy. But what I'm saying is he's capable of that, and I'd like to see that out of him because he's gonna get looks. I, I think the perimeter guys are too athletic for him. And this is why he was so bad against Minnesota in Minnesota. Yeah. Because they they just they took his space away. Mm-hmm. And that's what worries me about about Bogey is that I just don't think he can compete against younger athletic teams. Um Marcus also says, um, pick your best starting five um in the NBA. Tell me that Donovan Mitchell 
and Mike Conley aren't on that team. Well, Donovan Mitchell, Dude, arguably, I, Mike Conley's not in anybody's – there is not a top team in this league that Mike Conley has to be on. Yeah. He isn't going to be – he isn't going to start for Brooklyn. Um, you know, at, like the Knicks, yeah, he could be a great veteran leader for them, but they're they're playing so well with their youth, why would you do that? Um, he would not start in Phoenix. Um, he would not – I mean, he wouldn't start for the Clippers – Mm-hmm. I, I Mike Conley's a good player. He's a good player. He's older. He's making a crap ton of money, and you cannot count on Mike Conley to be healthy. Now, Donovan Mitchell, I don't know a team that's not trying to get Donovan Mitchell to be their starting two guard. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know who and that's that the is. Problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, he is amazing. Donovan Mitchell is an all star. He should be all world. He's not going to be all NBA because. At the very tippy top of this league, that is a very slim list. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think when you talk about Donovan Mitchell in the next five years, he's going to compete and he may even win an MVP award. Donovan Mitchell can start for any team in this league and they'd be better because of it. Agreed. Um, I, I don't think there's any question about that. Um, James Knight says, can someone tell Clarkson he can penetrate and kick occasionally? That part of their game without Mike Conley is zero. And it's a huge problem. Yeah. I wonder, because Oni's gotten very comfortable standing in the corner, mm-hmm. I wonder, I've got to believe that they're developing a driving kick. You have to, in this day and age of the, the NBA, you especially against zones, and i got to think Sacramento's going to zone up the Kings, yeah. by the way, um, or Sacramento's going to zone up the Jazz at, at times, you have to have a driving kick guy. And I wonder, is that Oni? I think James Knight's right on. Jordan Clarkson is the guy that should be driving and kicking. Yeah. I mean, that's his skill set. But he is – look, I love Jordan Clarkson. I think he's probably going to win the sixth man of the year. He's a black hole. Like, yeah. the ball does not come out. You give you give Jordan Clarkson the ball, he's shooting it, mm-hmm. period, or turning it over. That's the bad Jordan Clarkson we've seen over the last three weeks. Yeah. He, at some point, has to realize, hey, I've got elite three-point shooters just about at every other spot on the floor – um, where I can drive, it, with the exception of Rudy Gobert, who on the floor with you cannot hit a three? Bogey, Jingles, Oni, Royce, uh, Royce certainly, uh, Niang certainly, drive and kick occasionally. James Knight, you're exactly right about that. Um, Sean says, if you're a team in the position of the Jazz, you need to have a star player, and they just don't have them. They have no depth. And, I, and nope. again, I'm not trying to be a, a jerk about this. We've talked about this. There is this narrative that the Utah Jazz have elite depth. They don't. And I, I'm sorry to tell you that, and I know that that's a contentious point in a conversation piece. The Utah Jazz do not have elite depth. Even when they're 100%, their depth is not elite. They have role players. Jordan Clarkson showed us very succinctly that when Jordan Clarkson is hot, he's not a, he's not a depth guy. He's a starter in this league. But when Jordan Clarkson's bad... Now you know why he's not a Laker. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy is not a – again, Mike James. Mike James is great depth. Professional, makes the extra pass, understands his job is not to score 20 points. Occasionally that extra pass out of Jordan Clarkson would be awfully nice. Yep. Let And and again, just because you're not the one making the three doesn't mean that the three doesn't need to go in, right? So you kicking it to Joe Ingles, for him to hit a three is just as good as you hitting a three. Unless in your head, you're the one who thinks you're the only one that can hit that three. Yep. So it, it is a it's a dangerous it's a dangerous game. And that's why I say the, the Utah Jazz have built this season and accomplished these things based on a system that they played when they were 100 percent healthy, and they're playing that system because they know they don't have um, the talent, the raw talent that other teams have, the raw athleticism that other teams have. And so that's why I, yeah, I think you can, you can go up and down this roster and you can look at every guy with the exception of Don, because Don can do things that nobody else on this team can do. Yes. Every other player, you can go up and down this roster and you can say, okay, this guy can do this. That guy can do that. But the problem is, is they don't have the Clippers have two Donovan Mitchells. The Nets have three Donovan Mitchells. The Lakers have two Donovan Mitchells. Like the jazz only have, one Donovan Mitchell. That's the problem. And then you didn't do anything to supplement the team, so you didn't get that infusion of energy. You didn't get that infusion of new skill set. Like that's why it's it, it, like on a surface level, it's always a problem not to add talent. But when you start comparing yourself to the elite teams in the league, even the Suns, they have more depth than you, better depth than you, in my opinion. 
So that's why this whole idea that, oh, well, they have elite depth and, and they're going to go out and they're going to run these teams down and they're just going to shoot 45% from three in the postseason and go and win a championship, that's fairyland, man. That's just not, that's just not realistic. That's not going to happen. Yeah, it'll certainly be interesting to see. So, again, predictions tonight. I'm going to take the Jazz to win. I think they get three 20-point performers. I think they get double digits uh, out of, of Boyan. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll see what happens defensively. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I am not at all. Please don't go bet your mortgage payment on this. <laughs> um, but I am not at all confident. I think the Jazz will win. I think this is going to be one of those 125, one, 130, 125, 130, 127 games. Yeah, here's what I'm concerned about tonight is the turnovers for the Jazz. You were turning it over a lot when you had your starters on the floor. Now you don't have your starters on the floor. I think tonight you're going to see 15 turnovers out of this team, and I think that that's going to kill them. Uh, I think this is going to be a really, really tight game that they're going to be in, um, uh, and I think that they do win the game by one possession. <sighs> It's going to be tight. I, I mean, it. Uh, so you're really going. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yep. Um, because I because I don't think that the young guys are disciplined. I haven't seen discipline out of the out of the guys coming off the bench. And all so, right. so where do you in, in late game situations? If this is a you know, I, I think they'll come out and they'll they'll knock down a bunch of shots. But then I think what's going to happen is the Kings are going to lock down defensively and they're going to start pushing out yeah. on the three on on the three, and that's really going to slow the well, Jazz down. Well, that's the blueprint. I mean, yeah, there, I mean, no doubt. so so that's going to slow the Jazz down. And inevitably, what's going to happen is it's going to be really simple. Guys like Jordan Clarkson are going to come in and they're going to have a huge night or they're going to be nobodies. It's it's very simple. There is no middle ground. There is no, well, I gave yep. you 10 points yep. and had a decent little night. No, you're either going to give me 25 or you're going to give me like five and one assist. I mean, that's who we're talking about here. So my point is tonight, what I'm what I'm telling you to watch for in this game, watch for turnover numbers for the Jazz. Watch, watch what kind of uh, game that they're playing. Furthermore, watch points in the paint. Yeah. Who wins the points in the paint battle? That I think that'll determine it. Brandon Whiteside says Suns are a perennial lotto team. Of course they have more depth. Oh, I don't think there's any question the Suns have more depth. Yeah, and by I, the way, let's not forget they're missing I mean, I think they have three guys that don't have on. ankles anymore. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, so wait. So on one hand, we're gonna say the Suns are a perennial lotto team. And that's why they have more depth. But on the other hand, we're just gonna forget about all the draft picks the Jazz have missed on. Come on, don't. Well, don't, I was trying not to go back and rip the Jazz for being terrible in the draft. Don't try to but, sit here and say. Don't know. try to sit here and make excuses for the Utah Jazz. They they have missed in the draft consistently. They haven't done anything in the free agent market. They haven't made any kind of trade. So let's not sit here and say that. Well, the Suns have better depth because they've been an awful team, and that's somehow an advantage. That's that's just not going to be the same good roster. Enough. It's been for a couple of seasons. Yeah. Um, without Jay Crowder and Dario Sarge, who both have ankle injuries, I mean, they, they, they beat the Knicks 118, 110, um, because they're getting contributions out of Tory Craig, Mikhail Bridges. Uh, you're getting contributions. They're finding a way. Frank Kaminsky hit two massive free throws in that game. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you look at Cam Johnson, you want to talk about draft depth. Cam Johnson's a quality player for them. He's a guy that you can now rely on to hit corner and wing threes. Um, he's a guy that they they revert they run plays to make sure they get a reverse action so that he gets a look from three. Yeah, like he's a guy that you've built and developed. I look at Payne. I can't Payne is a guy that they've turned into a player who has bounced around this league and he's giving them double digit double digits in the garden the other night. Like I look at Carter. Like they're getting development out of their coaching staff, who's making these guys better. They're buying into a system. I look at the difference between that and the Jazz. The Jazz don't have a Cam Johnson that they've drafted and developed. Mm -hmm. They don't have that guy. Yep. And when you have the depth that the Jazz have, that's where you, you run into problems. Because when you lose two starters or you lose two key contributors, Jay Crowder and Dario Saric, who do you turn to? Well, you turn to Cam Johnson, and you turn to Torrey Craig, and you turn to – Frank Kaminsky's not going to give you 10 points probably. He's not going to give you – what, are you going to play him, 15 minutes maybe? Play and that's only because though. you have to, yep. but he's going to pick up fouls, mm -hmm. and he's going to make free throws. Mm -hmm. And if I said to you, who coming off the bench in Utah it, it, are you buying with Conley and Spider out, who are you buying? It, George Niang is who you're buying. That's your guy. Yes. Like, you can't count on Oni right now. It, like, there's there's no there there. So, anyway, we, we could go 
we could go on about this. I, I don't know. Surely the Jazz get the ball inside tonight. They can't play Russian roulette with the three ball again, can they? Well, that's who they that's are. That's what they do every night. That's <laughs> this who they is are. what we talk about every day on the show, man. Like, like, are you they, like, like they took what was it, fifty-seven threes the other night? Uh, like, that's who come this on, team dude. is. By the way, they took fifty-seven threes and passed on like ten more three-point shots that they could have taken. And so. what was funny is the Minnesota announcers are like, "Boy, this team really falls in love with the three. What team have you been looking at, bro? Like, that's who the Jazz are. Ty Johnson says Cam Johnson could be a starter. This team is so deep. Cam Johnson could start on a lot of teams in yeah. this league. I mean, yeah. bottom of the table, certainly he could. If you go midway down, I mean, he would start in Charlotte, Houston, um, Sacramento. I mean, there's a lot of places he'd start. Certainly Minnesota. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, I just – listen – you, Cam Johnson's a big body that's got long arms and legs, and he hits threes. Where is he not going to have a place to play? Yeah. I mean, it, seriously. Um, the – well, no. Okay, so Marcus is going in on how the, the Jazz have used their draft picks to create other players like Donovan Mitchell. Okay, I agree with that. But you, what did you turn your triumvirate of, of you know, Ennis Cantor – Gordon Hayward and Derek Favors into not much. Like you, you have. There are so many guys you've missed on. Sure, you, you. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not going down the draft rabbit hole with the Jazz. We've done that on this. I'm not doing it. Uh... Anyway, um, I'm taking the Jazz to win tonight. I'm taking the Suns to win tonight, and then I'm just going to sit back and I cannot wait for Friday night. Uh, like if Suns. Jazz, like that's Friday night in Phoenix, I believe. Yes. Um, I, I cannot wait for that game. And then we'll be in the building on Saturday night. Can I? It, by the way, if you're going to the Jazz game Saturday night, hit me up on Twitter. Absolutely, I'd, I'd be happy to uh, – well, I, I guess I shouldn't – I'd be happy to elbow bump um, and say hello. Uh, make sure you do that. Um, uh, Mina Gray says, uh, Sakshay Jazz, what are you talking about, huh? I don't know. I know he must have said something. I have no idea. Mina Gray is not happy listening to you. Sure she is. Everybody is. Um, James Knight says a case of 4X on Friday night's game, Monty. Yes. Dude. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You would. Uh, so, James. Oh, James is in Australia. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Go, 4X gold, let's my go, friend. Baby. And it's the right time of year. Well, actually, End of summer is the best time of year for Forex Gold. Yeah. Um, but Still better than any American beer. The best saying. brewery tour we've ever done. Um, we drank a lot of Forex when we were in Brisbane. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to Australia. All right. Um, hit subscribe. Take a picture that you're subscribed to us. Tweet at us. The Monty Show. M-O-N-T-Y. The Monty Show. And at SLC Supercars. That's how you win this Xbox Series S. Uh, give us a thumbs up on this video right now, please. That uh, also helps the channel grow. Uh, we are currently at 454 subscribers on this channel. So as soon as we get to 546 more, we're giving this Xbox away.